Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan and welcome back to another Lawn Fawn video. In today's card, I'm going to create a spooky Halloween background using the fox costumes before and after. This is a really fun background you can use for any combination of Halloween stamps. For today's card, I am using the fox costume before and afters like I had just stated. So I'm arranging a lot of the images off of this set because they were so darn cute. I just couldn't resist adding all of them. So I'm using Lawn Fawn white cardstock, loaded the images into my Misty stamping tools so I can stamp all of them at once. And then I'm inking it up with a Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, which is Copic friendly. Now I wanted to make sure I had a really good impression since I do have a lot of them on here. So I'm going to ink this up one more time. Now I'm also going to bring in some pumpkins from Pick of the Patch. So I'm going to use four pumpkins and stamp those as well. Now I can work on the Copic coloring. So for the fox, I'm going to use E19, E08, and E97. Like usual, I will have all of the colors I'm using listed at the very top of the screen. And I'm going to use this same color combination for all four of the fox images that I have in these adorable costumes. Now there are going to be some areas where it was just a really small amount of color, so I'm grabbing things that I already have on my desk, like when we get to the donut with the sprinkles. So those colors I won't list, but for the most part, I am going to have those colors listed for you for future reference. I'm adding the darkest shade on each side of the fox face so that my highlight area is in the middle, and then just blending out with those remaining colors. Now the E97, I do kind of go back over those darkest areas that just help kind of blend them all together so it wasn't such a stark difference between the colors. And on this one with the belly, I added the darkest color closest to its belly and blended out. After I have all of their bodies colored in, I'm going to work on the face and I'm going to use a W2 and a W0 to do that. Those are just some warm grays. I didn't need to add a lot of that color because I really didn't want that to be the focus. So I'm just going to start with the W2, add little flicks from each side going in and then blending out with the W0. And I didn't color in the entire face. So I am leaving some white space there. And I use those same colors for the belly as well. Then I'll just bring in an R21 to add little dabs of pink to the inside of their ears. The cherry, I have R24, R39, and then the cupcake, I have BG49 and BG15. And then like I said, those little sprinkles on the cupcake, just bringing in some random colors, whatever, whatever I happen to grab out of my stash. And I left the rest of the cupcake white. So now I have Y38, Y19, and Y15 for this adorable little bumblebee costume. And then C8, C6, and C4 for the other remaining stripes. I did leave the wings blank. I didn't add anything to the wings of that costume. I'm using those same C colors, the cool grays for the wings and the witch's hat. Little bit of shading, but for the stripe on the hat, I just did a straight purple. I didn't worry about it. Now I have this cute little ghost, this little chicken a ghost. Once again, just using the warm grays, the W2 and W0. And now for the chicks, I'm using those same yellow colors that I used for the bee costume. Just adding a little bit of the shadow area and blending out. So I just have a dark and a light. Doesn't matter which direction it's coming from. Now you don't always have to use a three or even two color combination. You could just color them straight with one color if you want. Another trick you can use is you can use like a yellow color and then for your shadow areas, use a light gray. That will help you give shadows to anything. So after I finish the sprinkles, I'll move on to the pumpkin. And I'm going to actually be using this same color combination on the next pumpkins here. So the colors are YR27, YR07 and YR12. 
I got to be honest, I struggle coloring pumpkins. I know there's so many cool ways that you can do this. You can add those lines in the pumpkins. I just went for that center highlight area and just made sure to kind of go over that really well with the lightest color to blend these lines all together. And I'll recolor, I'll color the remaining two pumpkins off screen and I'll just bring in some colors for my stems, which is G05 and G28. And I didn't even blend these two together. I just added that straight line of color. Now the, on the pick of the patch stamp set are these really fun faces you can add to your pumpkins. So I'm just going to take a small acrylic block and some of the jet black ink and I'm going to stamp a variety of faces on these pumpkins. So I made sure each one had a different face just to kind of make my background a little more fun. Of course there's the traditional jack-o-lantern look but some of these are spooky or smiling and then after that's done I'm going to take the coordinating dies off of both of these stamp sets hold them in place with some post-it tape and then run this through my die cut machine and I'll set all of my pieces off on the side so that I can work on my background. For my main card portion, I'm taking black licorice cardstock and I die cut that from the large slimline. And I have a piece of white cardstock die cut from the small slimline with lift the flaps. And I also have the slimline stitched hillside cut from cilantro cardstock so that it matches the stitched edgings. I did die cut that as well from the small slimline. I'm going to add some trees here and this is just from the birch tree die set. You could always use some other trees from any other stamp set. And a circle I just cut out from the white cardstock, which is going to be my moon. Moving on to my background, I have Twisted Citron, Lucky Clover, and Black Soot Distress Oxide ink. So we are creating our spooky background. This is kind of the setting of the scene. I'm adding that first layer of Twisted Citron using, using a blending brush, or you could use a foam tool, whatever you like to use for your blending. And I'll bring in that stitched hillside just to make sure I'm going down far enough since my hill does kind of dip a little bit. Then coming in with the Lucky Clover, just adding that little bit of color there. I will go all the way to the top because sometimes I find it's a lot easier to blend when I have layers of the Distress Ink or Distress Oxide inks on top of each other. And this doesn't have to be a perfectly smooth blend because we are going to bring in the cloudy stencil. So if it doesn't quite blend out the way you want it to, that's totally okay. It's gonna look amazing when we're all done. Now I'm going to top this off with a with the black soot distress oxide ink starting from the top working down just a little bit if you wanted it to be a little more drastic you could add blueprint sketch or bring in the black soot distress ink the oxide is a little more chalky feel to it so it isn't as black so the the black soot ink would work really well then I'm bringing in the cloudy stencil and I did start off by holding it in place with some post-it tape but then I found I really didn't need to do that. So I'm just bringing in the black soot ink once again starting on the stencil working my way up. That's going to give me the softest look. I didn't want these to be real stark. I just kind of wanted it to be kind of in the uh, faded background type of look. So just blending really soft in those circular motions. Then I'll remove that post-it tape and I'm going to kind of tilt my cloudy stencil. So this is how I'm making this six by six stencil work on a slimline card. I'm gonna tilt it so it's going off of the edge of the cardstock and then just slightly bringing it up. Now there are some areas where my lines kind of overlapped a little bit, but I'm bringing in a moon that is going to cover those oopses up a little bit. And just continue turning your stencil. You'll get different shapes of clouds around the edges and a little bit more just to fill in the background. One additional step that you can do if you want to is taking the black soot distress oxide ink, smushing it down onto your craft mat, spritzing with water, and then I'm gonna swish this up and flick it onto my background. This is just an extra step to kind of add a little bit more interest to the background. And you can add as much or as little as you want, or you could bring in some sparkles if you wanted to make your, your background sparkly. Once I'm done with this, I'm gonna set it off on the side to dry for a little bit because I will be doing some heat embossing on here. So I wanna make sure that this background is really nice and dry before I do that. 
So I will move on to my stitched hillside using some of the same colors. I'm starting with the Lucky Clover this time, and this is die cut from the cilantro cardstock, blending down just a little bit so it kind of fades off into that lighter color, and then topping it off once again with the black soot distress oxide ink. Now, as you can see, I kind of work in sections. So I do all of my stamping and coloring first. I'm gonna do all of my ink blending. So next I'm gonna have the moon to ink blend since my inks and blending brushes are all out. And this is the circle die cut that I'm using antique linen as kind of the base color. And then I'll bring in mustard seed to go around the very edges. You don't have to do the whole thing if you plan on having it kind of cut off on your hill like I'm going to have. Then I'm gonna take some clean water in a spritzer bottle and I'm gonna spritz my moon a couple times, making sure I have some big droplets on there and then dabbing that up with a paper towel. Now my background wasn't quite all the way dry, so I am speeding that process up with my heat tool. And to make sure I'm ready for heat embossing, I'm taking the embossing powder and just sprinkling that over the area that I want to put my sentiment. Since the embossing powder is sliding right off, I know that my background is ready for heat embossing. So I'll use my Misty tool to do this and I'm just lining up some of the elements off of my card, which is these birch trees and the hill stitched hillside, just to make sure I am leaving myself enough room and to find the exact placement of the sentiment. Then I'll bring in the sentiment from the Fox Costumes before and after stamp set. So it's gonna be two lines. And once I have that perfectly lined up, I'm kind of going off of that stitched line there was the easiest to line up the top of the stamp with that stitched line. Then I can pick the sentiment up with the door of my Misty. I'm gonna prep the cardstock with an anti-static powder tool just to help make sure my embossing powder sticks mainly to my inked image which I'm inking with Lawn Fawn Embossing Ink. Just giving that a good push down. And then I'll sprinkle on the white embossing powder. And this is really going to pop off of this fun, spooky background that we have with the dark colors. After my heat tool is nice and hot, I'll bring it to my cardstock and melt that embossing powder. After a couple seconds, I like to wipe my card with a Swiffer cloth, and that just helps remove any of the excess powder from before. Now the rest of this is just assembly. So you can see I did not mount this yet to my card base because I'm gonna have things hanging off, starting with these birch trees that I'm adding with the tape runner, and then I'm bringing in that stitched hillside, adding tape runner behind my moon, and then tucking that under. So some of these things are gonna hang off. We wanna be able to trim that off with a pair of scissors. And then I can start building up the scene a little bit. Now I already had planned that I wanted pumpkins on both ends of the card. And then this little bee I thought was adorable dancing in the moonlight. So I'm starting with the pumpkins off on the side, kind of spreading out where I want all the fox images to be. And when it comes to the little chicks. I'm kind of going to pair them up a little bit. You'll notice in a second here, like the uh, donut chick is going to be next to the cupcake chick. So kind of two sweet elements there. The chick in the pumpkin costume is going to be right next to my little pumpkin patch I have going on there. So I kind of had an idea of why, you know, which one I wanted where. Now all of the images are attached to the card base with a tape runner, except for the ones in the foremost front, which is the little chicks. So I'm adding really small foam squares to the back of those. And after I remove the backing of those foam squares, you can see I'm kind of staggering them up and down. I didn't want a straight line across since none of my other images are straight line across. And then I can complete this. I did have a piece of cardstock here that I cut just a little bit larger than my actual ink blended panel because I wanted that separation from the two dark colors. So that completes my card for today. This really fun, spooky Halloween slimline card. Great for Halloween or even just having a spec spooktacular day. So I think it's a great encouragement card as well. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to see what you create if you decide to use these combinations. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. <music>